So here's the other set of conceptual questions in particle physics. I do know a little bit more particle physics than nu nuclear physics, and mainly because I taught particle physics for high school students for three summers at a summer camp. <laughs> and, uh, as part of doing that, I had to teach myself a bit of particle physics. Also, my, um, my graduate school research uh, as part of the collaboration for search for neutron electric dipole moment. It's uh, something that you can characterize as a low energy particle physics. So um, as a member of the collaboration, I had to teach myself a little bit of particle physics that I normally wouldn't have learned as an AMO physicist. So, um, so there are certain things I'm looking for here. Um, let's see how well generative AI answers. And this is really the place where I've been trying to get to all semester. I've been excited all semester to ask these questions to generative AI of um, uh, better quality than last year with the ChatGPT 3.5. And I'm kind of looking to see how well uh, perplexity answers these questions. So let me ask this. Um, yeah, I, I, so I don't remember what I have in the model answer in terms of weaving all these in. Let me just uh, have perplexity generate an answer and critique it. That's a lot easier than writing my own answers. What I will say is um, all these things, it matters for indistinguishable particles. So if you are dealing with like electron and muon, they are not identical particles. None of these matters. But if you are dealing with two electrons, two indistinguishable particles, then all these other stuff begins to matter. Particle spin that determines whether it's a fermion or a boson. Spin half particles are fermions. Integral spin particles are bosons. Exchange symmetry. Fermions obey anti-symmetrization requirement. The bosons obey symmetrization requirement. And anti-symmetric wave function, um, the way you construct it, it, basically two particles, if they have the same um, the quantum number, quantum state, you cannot construct them in anti-symmetric uh, configuration. Because the way you do that, you end up with a zero wave function. Let's see how perplexity weaves all that together into better paragraph than what I was saying out loud. So, uh, fermions and bosons are two fundamental classes of particles. Yeah, this integer properties and statical. So it, this is the, relating to their spin, and this is relating to the symmetrization requirement. Uh, detailed explanation. Okay, particle spin. Yeah, that's um, half integer spin uh, means they are fermions. Integer spin means they are um, bosons. Um, so all the examples of stable matter particles you have, electron, proton, neutron, they are all fermions. And all the, um, the force mediators you have, photon uh, is a boson, and uh, W boson is a boson, Z boson is a boson, <laughs> they have it in their name, and also gluons are bosons. Um, and what other force, me oh, gravitons <laughs> that mediate gravity in quantum mechanical way that we don't quite fully understand are also bosons. Gravitons have a spin too, or from the symmetry of gravitational waves, they suspect they should have spin too. No one's ever actually detected the graviton. Uh, we've detected gravitational waves, but you know, like the, the, the you know classical way in, with the general relativity. Um, so yeah, indistinguishability, yeah, yeah. Identical particles like two electrons are indistinguishable. That's uh, like fundamentally built into theory. That's one difference between quantum mechanics and classical mechanics. In classical mechanics, where you would assume that in theory you could label them and distinguish them, in quantum mechanics you can't do that at all. Uh, swapping to electric particles does not result in a new distinguishable state, right? So that leads to symmetrization requirement. For fermions, um, yeah, um, do they, yeah, I think they're gonna go a little bit more into that below. So, yeah, bosons don't have to follow this principle. And in fact, oh, yeah, <laughs> it can lead to boson state condensation. So you do that uh, in labs. You do that with uh, basically spin one matter um, particles. You can find uh, uh, atoms like rubidium, uh, certain isotopes of rubidium where adding up electron and nuclear spins, you end up with a spin, integral spin for the entire atom. And you can kind of put them into Bose-Einstein uh, condensate with the other rubidium atoms. 
So exchange symmetry, yeah. That's the statistical um, rules that they need to obey. Fermions obey anti-symmetry generation requirement, which means this kind of mathematical requirement. When you swap the labels for the two particles, like this, you know, R1, R2, swapped into R2, R1, then the wave function you had before becomes minus of that, you know, anti-symmetry. <laughs> now, this is, uh, okay, this sentence is wrong. Is they swap the cause and effect backward. So, Paul exclusion principle is the consequence of the anti-symmetry gesture requirement. Because when you do this, uh, in the way you... Oh, they are not... Yeah, so they, they are missing a little bit of that. So, um, so you need to kind of write it out mathematically to... Um, to kind of see how that gets, um, how you get this. I, I think I don't like uh, how they are explaining this part here. You know, this matter is crucial to fermions. Um, the, when two fermions are in the same state, the anti-symmetry collapses to zero. So they're just giving this to you as a um, just a statement and doesn't have to be that. So when you have a multi-particle wave function, the way you construct them, is um, as a product of a single particle state. So if uh, like psi and um, R, if that describes a single particle state, then uh, for multi-particle state, you would construct something like this. Uh, the quantum number that characterizes the state for particle one with the positions of particle one times the quantum numbers that characterize the second particle state with the positions or labels of the second particle state. So this is an example of multi-particle state. And um, when you just take this generic multi, when you take this generic multi-particle state, um, that has a bit of an issue in that you don't have anti-symmetrization. Let me um, make, give myself a little more space and talk about that. So so this doesn't lead to, um, it's not symmetric because imagine doing a swap of the two particles. So you keep the states the same, but apply that to the second particle times, keep the state the same and apply that to first particle. Like these two wave functions, there's no reason this would have any kind of relationship um, to the, the first one that we wrote. Like, uh, you can see that with, the, like, it, use the hydrogen wave function that you have from uh, chapter 7, chapter 8, as an example. Like, there's no reason to suspect that this expression would have any kind of connection to this expression. So, but we have a procedure for building symmetric state. You can kind of imagine doing this. Um, so the problem is that when you build something like this, these two wave functions have nothing to do with each other. And after messing with it a little bit, you get an inspiration that what if you simply add these two and call this your total uh, wave function of dealing with the N1 and N2 and R1 and R2 then you imagine swapping these two labels. So if I'm writing down something like psi of n1 and n2, dealing with r2 and r1, and as I write it down, so r2, wherever I see, um, so the first slot was r1, so wherever I see r1, I write in r2, wherever I see r2, I write in r1, so this should be R1 times psi N2, R, CR1, so I write R2 plus psi N1, I see R1, so I write in R2, and psi N2, I see R2, so I write in R1. So comparing this with that, you can kind of see, oh, this term is equal to that, and this term is equal to that. So the whole thing as a whole expression are equal to each other. So this is a way to build a symmetric wave function out of combination that wasn't symmetric, it didn't have any symmetric property at all. So, so this looks fun. 
Now, um, with this symmetric wave function, if you imagine n1 being equal to n2, that doesn't result in any issue. Like you say, okay, they are the same quantum number. Then you write it psi of uh, the total wave function again, and n r1 r2. Then it looks like psi of n r2 psi of n r1 plus psi of n r1 times psi of n r2. And you might realize, oh, these since the functions are the same and the kind of the multiplication I do here is commutative, these are the same, so I could write them this way. Um, and, and all of that is fine. With a symmetric wave function, um, no problem with any of these. Um, what gets more interesting is when you are trying to come up with an anti-symmetric wave function, where you are trying to uh, build up these multi-particle states in such a way that when you swap these two labels, that what you end up with is negative of the wave function you had before. So you are, tr when you're, you know, you think about, okay, you know, what mathematical ways are there to have this kind of property. And with the right amount of time, you realize, oh, I don't have to add them. I can subtract to them. And subtracting them leads to anti symmetric wave function and um, and and you can see that here so uh, when this was a uh, addition you know swapping that resulted in same wave, fu wave function when it's not subtraction the two parts that are the same they have different sign so um, so this isn't exactly equal to that you have to multiply this by minus one to get something that is equal to um, the original wave function. So this uh, uh, one written with a minus is anti-symmetric. So, you know, so they are not equal. They are equal to, you know, uh, minus one times, oh, okay, that's kind of confusing to write. So let me just not say they are not equal to each other. They are related to each other in this way uh, with a minus one in between uh, when they uh, swapping the particles. Now, this is where you run into an issue if you do this. If you say they have the same quantum number, then with this minus sign here, when you try to construct your anti-symmetric wave function the way you did before, then you realize, oh, this being entirely the same as that means they cancel out, you get zero. So your anti-symmetric wave function that you are trying to build with the same two quantum numbers, you are not going to have a way to be able to build it. So, so that's uh, what it should have said. Um, so, so this anti-symmetry that, that requires uh, that this, that you cannot have two set of quantum numbers being same as each other. Because if they're the same, it, uh, it results in this. So, so this leads to, uh, there's a logical implication that did, this leads to the Pauli exclusion principle. So it's a long way of saying that what perplexity says here is wrong. It's the other way around. The, um, it's not, anti-symmetry is not a consequence of the exclusion principle. The exclusion principle is a consequence of the anti-symmetry. Uh, for bosons, None of these interesting complications. You just, you know, no exclusion principle, you can do whatever. I mean, you still have a symmetrization requirement, but that symmetrization requirement doesn't lead to these other interesting requirement. Um, so yeah, anti-symmetric wave function, I just uh, explained how this comes to be, which perplexity could have explained but didn't. Um, yeah, I think the rest are fine. All right, let me get rid of all this writing. Back to my normal way. Okay, let's ask the next question. Oh, we were just on question one. All right, uh, next question. What are the six particle conservation laws? Oh, can I list them all? Let me see. Is uh, perplexed this answering? Let me try to list them all. So there are the ones you already know. 
energy conservation, momentum conservation. They are technically one and the same energy momentum conservation. Um, you have angular momentum conservation, which is its own thing. You have um, you have uh, like a baryon number conservation, lepton number conservation, and um, and you have uh, as an approximate conservation law, you have flavor conservation. Oh, you have an electron uh, the charge conservation. Uh, so I listed the seven. Um, Oh, but uh, the energy and momentum is really one, so I guess that's a six. Maybe that's all that is. Um, oh, it doesn't have a follow-up question about what textbook? No. <laughs> it should have asked which textbook we are talking about. Um, so anyway, so we'll double check. Yeah, conservation of charge. All right. Um, what else it lists? What might the detection of particle interaction of biology Consider it a good thing. Um, well, it's it's job security, you know. That's what they get paid. They get paid, so, so that's why that's a good thing. <laughs> also, we are actually looking for some symmetry violation in certain places, like a baryon and lepton number conservation. If those are conserved, then you have a, a unanswerable question like why is there more matter today than there are, is antimatter. And for that question to have a scientific answer, we want baryon number uh, violation. So part B is, uh, is yeah, it's an open-ended question. Uh, the part, the answer I have to lead with is, is the job security. It's more interesting, you know, things for beyond the job security, you know, interesting things to investigate. It's not boring. Um, so let's start with the conservation laws. So charge, baryon number, lepton number, I did that. If you count energy and momentum as a separate thing, then, oh, you know what? Your textbook probably said the strangeness instead of flavor co uh, conservation. Strangeness is an example of flavor, so that's fine. It's an approximately conserved thing. Um, why isn't there angular momentum conservation? Um, uh, but this might be the six things your textbook lists. Uh, I would list angular momentum conservation as its own thing. But your textbook might have missed it. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, significance by like conservation laws. Would it be a groundbreaking discovery? Yeah, you'll get Nobel Prize if you uh, do that yourself. Uh, <laughs> new physics. Yeah, physics beyond the standard model. Yeah, that's what basically every particle physicist is looking for. Um, require new theories. Yeah. Or theoretical physicists, it could actually confirm some of the um, speculations that are out there. Uh, and even if it doesn't confirm a speculation, it, it's a new ground for more speculation, which is what theoretical physicists do. Uh, yeah, the, the deeper understanding. It doesn't answer, mention the job security once. I mean, physicists need to get paid, and <laughs> more activity in the field means more funding, either from uh, these days, mostly government funding, but um, there are also private organizations that are interested in fundamental physics. So, but yeah, it's an open-ended question. Uh, you don't have to be so um, um, practically minded as I am, <laughs> or blunt as I am about job security. You know, physicists are people too. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, six known quarks, up, down, strange charm. Top and bottom. Uh, top and bottom have sometimes alternate names, truth and beauty. Um, uh, and uh, general quark composition of baryon, three quarks, um, no antiquarks. Or uh, it's three valence quarks. Um, the way people uh, like to describe protons and neutrons is actually a vast sea of quark and antiquarks, of which there's a net. Um, so for proton, two net up quark and one net down quark. For neutrons, one net up quark, two net down quarks. Um, so uh, for a meson, it's a quark and antiquark. So there's no stable meson because you would just go undergo annihilation. General so for quark composition, I give two specific examples of each. Oh, yeah. So uh, I already gave two specific examples for proton and neutron. For meson, the first meson to be discovered was the pi meson, uh, which comes in three vari varieties, um, two charged one, positive and minus, and one uh, neutral. The neutral one you can think of as like up and anti-up, or down and anti-down, or uh, actually a linear a combination of those two to form a... Uh, 
the neutral pion that obeys all the symmetrization requirement as a boson. Um, and uh, so the positive pion must be a, a up and anti down quark, and the negative pion must be a, a down and anti up quark. Um, and there are more baryons, more mesons, but those are the kind of lightest baryons and mesons. Uh, why do baryons with the same quark? Not different their rest mass energies yeah so you have examples of spin three half baryons which will uh, be basically uh, be an excited state of um, and from uh, special relativity you know that if you have more energy then you have more rest mass so that's basically what that would be let's read what purple XD says um, so the six known quarks yeah up down Let's see, do they have, yeah, and the uh, uh, mass of up and down quarks are interesting. So, you know, I said proton has two up quarks and one down quark, but you add up, you know, two times, so, you know, uh, 4.6 plus 4.8, that's nowhere near a giga electron volt mass that uh, rest energy of proton is. So what that tells you is that for protons and neutrons, basically all of their rest mass comes from relativistic effect. Like the, the quarks making up uh, protons and neutrons are uh, in a kind of relativistic setup. Uh, so, yeah, these are all correct. Uh, color charge, um, yeah, they, they are all going to be the same. They carry color. That's the important thing. They don't have a uh, particular color as their property. Uh, charm and strange. And uh, historically, it's uh, flipped the other way around. Strange quark was found first, and then the charm quark. You can kind of see the reason for that. Strange quark is lighter than the charm quark. So the particles that contain strange quark are lighter in mass, so they were easier for us to find. Ch charm quark took particle accelerators a lot of work to find. Um, strange quarks are just in nature. Uh, you can, K mesons, which were first discovered in uh, cosmic ray uh, particles, they, they contain strange quark. And then the top and bottom quark, again, the bottom quark was found first because it's lighter, <laughs> again. And the top quark was, I think it was found in the 90s. Uh, it was anticipated for a lot longer than they were actually found because it took a lot of mass to, uh, energy to get to that mass. Um, yeah, it, this is like on the same order as the Higgs boson, I think. So, yeah, they all sound right, uh, yeah. Baryon number, spin, yeah, charge, yeah. The the oddest thing about quarks is that they have this, um, you know, a third of charge. It's a fractional of elementary charge. And they're, yeah, never found it. Confine, color confinement is the name we've given to the phenomenon that we never see free quark. <laughs> um, I don't know if uh, particle physicists consider that on, uh, answer the question now. So quark composition of baryons and mesons, uh, yeah, general rule, three quarks, yeah. Proton has two up quarks, one down quark. So the way I memorize this is proton is isospin up, so it has more up quarks than down quark. Neutron is isospin down, so it has more down quarks than up quark. Um, that, that's, I, that's I think how they actually named up and down quarks in reference to isospin, which is... Uh, it's not spin, but it exhibits the same kind of symmetry properties that spin half systems do. <laughs> yeah. Mesons, quark, and antiquark. Yes, yeah, so I described the pion, um, uh, well, positive pion, up and anti down. And yeah, I didn't talk about kion. Um, and yeah, this would be one. Uh, I don't know if that's actually correct, because there are two neutral kaons. One is um, labeled this way, and the other is labeled as the antiparticle of the neutral kaon. I'm not sure about the convention. If it's this version that's labeled as uh, the particle version of neutral kaon, or if it's the other one, you know, strange and anti-down, that would be the, the antiparticle version. It might be correct. Uh, but let me take this opportunity to plug a uh, particle data group website, pdg.lbl.gov. It's the they are the keeper of particle physics data. Uh, they have um, um, the publication. They have physical publication. I think in one of my lecture videos, I point out how you can order free books. <laughs> Aside from that, let me look up uh, in. Uh, 
summary table uh, with the mesons, uh, what neutral K meson makeup is supposed to be. This is the authoritative source that that you should be using, that I would use, that any uh, working particle physicist would use. You do kind of have to learn to scroll through these excited states that, you know, that have uh, boring up and down quirks. <laughs> when I come across K meson, I'll stop. Um, yeah, strange mesons and neutral K on is yeah, down and anti strange. And it's the antiparticle that's been assigned uh, anti down and strange. All right, good. Uh, that's how you would check factual things from generative AI that you are not sure of. Okay, uh, see why do variants with the same quark come different the rest mass? Um, all of this comes down to excited states. Yeah. So uh, sometimes the 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 way the excited state forms with is with a different spin al alignment. These delta variants uh, have spin three half. And the way I like to think of it as it's a excited state of um, the combinations that form protons, neutrons, and eta uh, baryon. Uh, and the uh, binding energy, yeah, again, another way to say excited state. Uh, quark mass difference, um, yeah, I don't think that um, that doesn't address the question because we are looking at the same quark composition. So... Um, like this doesn't address the question, but it's fine. I think you can kind of see um, that it doesn't match the conditions there anyway. Yeah. All right, fourth and last question. So far, it's been doing good. Uh, it's lived up to the hype I've been hyping <laughs> since the beginning of the semester. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, what is the same model? Um, one, yeah, this is the reference to Higgs boson. Um, Four fundamental forces, that would be the uh, electromagnetic, weak nuclear force, which are actually unified into electroweak force, strong force, and the uh, gravitational force is not really part of standard model, but we assume it exists. It, the way the particle physics model is built, it doesn't, it, it doesn't contradict anything in uh, general relativity, so you know, gravity is still there, that's the fourth force. 12 elementary fermions. Let's see if I can name them all. Um, so that would be the six quarks that I already named above. And there you have electron, muon, tau, lepton, and they're associated with neutrinos. Um, electron neutrino, uh, muon neutrino, and tau neutrino. There's a bit of a complication in that neutrino generation or lepton generations are mixed. The the names I've given for neutrinos, they are not the mass eigenstates of neutrino. So there's the lightest neutrino, middle neutrino, heaviest neutrino, and this uh, skewed generation leads to neutrino oscillation. So six quarks, six leptons, I think that's the 12 elementary fermions. Force mediator bosons, um, no need to address their number. Let me address their number. There's the photon, there's only one of them, uh, photon. There's the W boson, you have two kinds, positive and minus. Uh, yeah, I think I'm counting them separately. They are particle antiparticle pairs. Uh, let me just count them as two separate ones. There's the Z boson, uh, which is like a photon except heavy. Um, and then you have, yeah, you have eight gluons. So gluons are bicolored. They have, a, they, they carry one color and one anti-color. And um, there being three colors, you might think there's a nine different gluons. But one of those nine color combinations of color, anti-color is colorless uh, or color singlet combination. And um, that color neutral gluon cannot mediate strong force. So nine minus one, there's only eight gluons. So 12 of those. And the scalar boson, that's the Higgs boson. And I think so far there's no confirmation that there's no, uh, there's more than one Higgs boson, but it's one of the kind of models beyond the standard model that, um, that uh, hypothesize there might be multiple kinds of Higgs boson. And um, that would be the active area of research. <laughs> Let's see what Purple XD says. Probably gives the all the correct answers. Uh, 
electromagnetic force emitted by photon, weak force emitted by this, and these are technically unified in the standard model. Um, that's uh, really what um, that's uh, the what ties the ball on the standard model with the Higgs boson that describes the spontaneous symmetry breaking that explains why W and G bosons look so different from the photon. Uh, strong force yeah, emitted by gluons uh, and gravitational force. Yeah, it's not included in the model, but it exists. We know it's there. <laughs> we don't deny existence of gravitational force. <laughs> oh. We're not flat earthers. <laughs> Twelve elemental fermions. Yeah, six quarks, six leptons. It's possible there's a fourth generation of uh, quark and leptons, but um, that would be part of physics beyond the standard model. There's no evidence that there's a fourth generation of this. Force me the bosons. Photon, there's, yeah, I didn't know, I guess the question says no need to address their number. Uh, so let me ask a follow up question about how there are 12 mediator bosons. Um, Higgs boson is, yeah, confirmed to. It might be they first saw a signal that might correspond to Higgs boson in 2012, and then it was like firmly confirmed, announced in 2014. Um, let me see. Or uh, let me ask two follow-up questions. One, I'm going to ask about the number of force mediator bosons, and then two, let me ask about the discovery year of the Higgs boson. Um, yeah, so that's the summary, yeah. Okay, so um, can you explain the number of uh, force mediator bosons? How would you count them so that there are 12 of them? For 12 force mediator bosons, photon, um, yeah, there's one, gluons, yeah, eight types of gluons, so eight bosons there. And if you count W plus and W minus separately, then that's two, and G boson is another. And Higgs boson technically isn't a force mediator. Um, 12 force mediator bosons, yeah, while well, not a force mediator, okay, yeah. Done. Um, and, the, and in what year was uh, uh, Higgs boson discovered? In what year was the Higgs boson uh, confirmed to exist if um, references? Because it already said up above 2012. I want to check with the reference. They might have, there might have been an announcement in 2012 that they think they found something. Uh, yeah, initial discovery announcement, yeah. And then there was a longer period of analysis and accumulation of data. Uh, oh, confirmed. It. Wow, where did I get 2014? Um, I got it from somewhere. Um, yeah. Yeah. So CERN is going with the 2012 as the year of discovery, because in 2022, they said 10 years after its discovery. 10 years ago, yeah, that's the initial announcement. Um, do they say anything about 2013? 2013? No. Um, I don't know, and I don't want to be that guy. Uh, looking, editing Wikipedia to <laughs> win arguments, which I wouldn't do, but uh, let me just look up the year, 2013. Okay, um, yeah, so I must have uh, gotten the 2014 from some other source. Uh, I probably should correct that. Um, I, I, I don't know where I got the 2014 from. It must be wrong. Because, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, it's just... Yeah, it's fine. So the Nobel Prize in 2013 apparently was for that. So uh, I would imagine the, yeah. So, 
All right. So that's uh, I think everything. Uh, so yeah, Purple XD did a lot better than uh, ChatGPT did, especially with these modern physics topics. Um, so so yeah, if you are using it as a tutor, a learning tool, then great, use it. Uh, it's <laughs> you know it fixes my mistakes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I think uh, um, this has been fun semester. Uh, I, really did want to ask all these questions to a better generative AI than I had access to last year. And I think that's been good.